I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty nineteen Subaru BRZ Ryu edition with no official launch control, but we have a clutch. Blew that one. So horsepower and torque. Two hundred and five horsepower, one hundred and fifty six pound feet of torque from a two liter four cylinder boxer engine that's been around for a very long time now. And you know who loves it? Everybody. I loves it. I know you <laughs> want more power, but I am very happy with this thing running around in public. I always want more power, but this is very appropriate for the size of this car. It's still super fun. I just want more. I'm going to try a better launch real quick. There you go. <laughs> Lots of fun. So what do you want to talk about first? I would like to talk about the looks because that's the special part of this. It is bluish. Yes, it's called Cool Gray Khaki and we had it on the WRX last year. Yes, and it's called the Ryu Edition. Yeah, so I guess the WRX was successful as the Ryu Edition, so now they brought it for the BRZ. And Ryu means something like lightning. Yeah, thunderstorm actually. Which is why Ryu, Ryachu, it's a lightning Pokemon. Perfect way to remember. And Ryu from uh, Street Fighter. Ryu had fireballs. Yeah, and this is a Ryu Edition. But this isn't a fireball car. This is a no, thunderstorm car. No, he had car. light. He had uh, his his fireballs were, were white. They it were... was like lightning. He was shooting lightning, bro. No, it was fire. Yeah, I guess maybe. I don't know. It's been a long time. All right, and into cliche corner. Let's see how much fun it is. <laughs> how much fun are you having? <laughs> Literally the most. It's like this and a Miata are probably the funnest cars ever. Yeah, they're so fun. This is so good. You can control it perfectly. We do have a limited slip differential. It's just such a good handling car. And you always have to be in the top of the RPMs. You're always ripping it, but you're not going like way past the speed limit. It's perfect. Yeah, pretty much like a Miata, except I think this looks better. Yeah, this is probably more fun and better than a Miata, but Miata's like Miata and it's got a convertible assault. Yeah. I think it kind of wins there. And for everyone who says this needs more horsepower, I personally think just go get a 370Z. Well, I, I partially agree. However, I just want more power in this. So I've honestly been looking at these used because this has been around since like 2013 or something like that. You can get used ones with the same engine as this for under 10 grand now. So I've been looking at getting one of those and maybe swapping an LS V8 into it because uh, that'd be a lot of fun. So we got a little sidetrack with the cliche corner. Back to the looks. Okay, so I do think it looks good. The paint looks good. The wheels are probably my favorite part. Yeah, this whole setup looks very nice. We do have Brembo brakes as well. And we've got that little BRZ spoiler that we said is like similar to the Audi TT RS and BRZ, BRZ. Look, honestly, we can interchange it because, you know, we're a British we're colony. We're Canadian. But we're next door to America. So we it's win. Both. We win everything. We do what we want. However, to be honest, this one's kind of a BRZ. Like yeah, 100%. yeah. <laughs> like I call it BRZ. Well, yeah. sometimes maybe. Maybe. And overall, looks wise, it's exactly the same as it's been for the last couple years. And I am totally okay with that because I really like the looks. But let's get into the specific Ryu stuff. Hit me with it. We get a little lip kit all the way around. It says STI on it. I don't know why because this isn't an STI, but it's Subaru Technica International. So we got a bunch of black accents on the outside. We got our badges in black, and that's pretty much it for the outside. You know what I noticed from the look of this car? What? Really thin tires, like really narrow. Yeah, they are. But like, that's kind of helps for sliding right when you get it, right? Because oh, you don't have sure as much grip. Yeah, exactly. And that's what makes it fun. And what is the Continental recommended tire for the BRZ? The Continental Extreme Contact DWS 06. So with this Boxster engine, it's been around for a while. I've been looking at these used because you can get them for like under 10 grand with pretty much the same engine. I would really want to swap an LS V8 into this. I think it'd be the most fun. It'd be stupid fun. And with all your research, you found something wrong with the Boxer engine as well. Yeah, that's right. Apparently there was a recall for Subarus and Toyota 86s for the Boxer engine for the 2013 model year for the lifters. So people were going in for the recall and then blowing their engines like a week later. It was like all over the forums and Jalopnik and stuff, which is pretty crazy. So you need to keep an eye out on that if you buy an older one. Yeah, so hopefully that doesn't apply to newer models like this one later. I wonder if they warrantied people's engines who blew after warranty. No, I don't think so. I think that was the problem. Ah. People were getting really upset. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. Yeah, I don't think it happened to many Subarus, oddly enough, but I think it happened to a lot of 86s. So people thought that the Toyota techs couldn't work on the Subaru engines. That's the theory. Yeah, pretty crazy. 
And people ask a lot why we don't talk about like warranties and like how reliable cars are. We don't actually know because the cars just come out. We kind of review cars for what they are. Yeah, we always tell you guys if something breaks during the week that we have it, but outside of that, we can't really comment on it. But since you are looking at older ones, the V8 swap. Yeah, that's when the engine stuff, I was like, oh, huh, they had that problem. <laughs> Journalism. Yeah. And before I let you drive and talk about the handling and all that stuff, I want to talk about the infotainment. Okay. So the Toyota 86 we drove, it was automatic and that sucked, but then it also didn't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because it's Toyota. Yeah. And then this one does, and it's got rewinding satellite radios, and it's got Tune Mix. And it all works flawlessly, and I have been enjoying Tune Mix, thanks to Yuri's recommendation. So we had a fan from a very big tech blog tweet about not understanding why people are obsessed about Tune Mix. Explain it to them. Okay, and rewinding satellite radio, here's how it works. We just got unlimited data in Canada like a month and a half ago for cell phone plans, so that's why we weren't too hot on Spotify. Well, it's also very expensive. Yeah. Like very expensive in Canada. So that's why, you know, satellite radio, it's a lot easier than running overages on data. Exactly. Next thing, I like having DJs pick music for me. I like the radio. Spotify, it like creates playlists. You know what's in the playlist, so you can skip through and then like that's it. What I really want is commercial free radio that I can skip forward. So with rewinding, if you hear a song you like, you can go back and play it again. And then it'll always start at the beginning of songs, which is really nice. But what Tune Mix lets you do is put a bunch of your favorites into one playlist. So say I've got 70s, 80s, 90s, and thousands. If I click next from 70s song, it may play a song from 2000s. Next again, a song from 90s. So I don't have to switch stations as often, do as many clicks. Just by going left and right, I can hear all the music I want and I don't know what's coming next, so I won't get sick of anything. Oh, I get it. I started to enjoy it after so, you showed me. So what stations do you use? Because you just 43, like 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. And for me, there's like 30 or 40 different rock stations. So there's a lot more variations that I could throw into tune mixes to really like. So I think if you like rock music, it's a lot better. And that's pretty much the best explanation I can give to why we use satellite radio, especially with rewinding and tune mix over Spotify in Canada. And that is a non-sponsored rant by Yuri. Yes, and I'm sure you guys will bug me about it and I'll have to bring it up again in six months, which I will. Although satellite radio, hook us up. <laughs> you ready to drive? Oh, I'm ready. All right, time to send. <laughs> lots of tire squeals, still lots of fun though. So let's get into what makes a Subaru BRZ a Subaru BRZ. All the fun stuff. Rear nice. wheel drive, manual. LSD, manual handbrake. What more do you want? More power, but I don't. You do. Yeah. But that's what makes a BRZ a BRZ is a low power. For the moment, because I feel like when this does get like a full, full refresh, they're going to finally give it more power. No, they won't. Oh, they, they will for sure. They're not going to add more power to anything. What car, what company has added less power or took away power? It's, I mean, it's going to be the there's same. Actually a couple. Subaru just keeps it like right down the middle with the classics. Man. Imagine if they turboed this thing though. That'd be that'd be the best. That's for everyone else to do, man. That's why they have the TS so it's ready for the upgrades. It's not ready for turbos. And one of the actual performance bits that this gets is a short throw six speed shifter. So let's use that to downshift in the cliche and oversteer. <laughs> this is ridiculously fun to drive. For low power, this and the Miata are just neck and neck. Like it's so fun. Exactly, that's what I was telling you, man. Oh, I know. And I actually hate this shifter. I feel like it's not precise. It's super hard to get into the right gear sometimes. Like I've had more issues with this shifter than pretty much any other car. Yeah, it's actually not as good as the Miata shifter, like not even close. It's still a six speed manual, which is fun, but I do agree, I did have some trouble getting to second a couple times. So when you're in third and you want to downshift to second, you get caught on the reverse gate. So you want to go from third down to second very lightly. You don't want to go over and down, you want to go a little bit over and down. So that's the problem, huh. By the way, I also noticed that these are really nice, soft padded leather for your knees. Really like that. Back to the video. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but the pedal placement, heel toe downshifting, it's all super great. Exactly, and I kind of want a nice armrest for my elbow, but I know why they didn't, because the Genesis, which you complain about, had a nice armrest, which got in the way. Yes, but I guess you could just like put a pillow there. Yeah, maybe. Like the cup holder is removable and it does fit a small cup of coffee, but does not fit my cell phone. But it does fit Jacob's Android cell phone, which proves once and for all that Android is superior. Until the new Android comes out and it's bigger than that, it doesn't fit. <laughs> it's like fitting an iPad in vertically. Yeah, pretty much. And we should probably do the visor test. Let's see if anything has been improved or worsened. Three, two, one. Absolutely no movement. You know, I had sun in my eye this morning. Did you? Yeah. And then you couldn't move it. 
That's why we do the visor test, to get rid of sun from the side of your face so that you're not blinded. But let's get back to handling. It's relatively flat, but not like Porsche flat or anything like that. Exactly, it's like a good amount. It's flatter than a Miata. And a normal car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but this does still give me that feeling of baby Porsche when I drive it. We said that last oh, yeah, yeah. time, and it still gives me that feeling. I stand by it. Yeah. But the overall suspension, we got the Sax dampers. I absolutely love them. There's no sport modes, there's no adaptive stuff. It's just car, which is great. But what we did find out from our last review, so there's a track, traction control off button. So we click that, figuring that turns everything off. But what we really need to do is hold the off button and then extra hold it so that it turns traction and stability off. That's right, which is a little bit confusing, but I mean, now that you know, it's kind of easy. If you own the car, you went to a parking lot, trial and error would fix that pretty quick. Yeah, the problem is they just put a race flag and call the track. You're like, oh yeah, that's the mode I want to be in. Yeah, I feel like you don't need this to be limited by electronic controls. It's already limited by the motor. But yeah, exactly, by horsepower and torque. And as far as overall upgrades and everything for the Ryu edition, this is basically just a Sport Tech RS with some fancy paint and some fancy lip kits. I really like the uh, Akazuma yellow one. Inazuma? Uh, yeah, Montezuma. Inazuma. Yes, yes. That one was my favorite limited edition kind of thing. Just because it was yellow? Yeah, and then there's also that older Bug Eye Subaru that's like rolling around Toronto. Oh, yeah. The yellow right. one. Right, I yeah. love that color. Yeah, those are cool. Bring that back. Oh, and this is also limited to 100 units in Canada. So other than that, this is basically just a SportTech RS with $2,000 added to it. But Does this exist in the States? No, I think they have their own special edition. I think it's called the Series Gray. But it'll be the same color? Yes. Sick. And a couple things that I forgot to mention about the radio. So we've got hard buttons on the side, which a lot of car companies screw up. So that's amazing. We've got a volume knob, a tuning knob, and the tuning knob will rip through channels so fast. Look. Look at I know. That. Yeah, it's great. That is unreal. This is actually my one of my favorite infotainments, and this can like fit into anything. Yeah, and then we got hard climate control buttons. And one thing that I also noticed, I don't know if they changed it, but the rear view mirror feels really fancy. Like it's frameless. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. Oh, and another thing regarding my Sirius Satellite Radio Spotify rant. Sirius Satellite Radio is built into cars and you can control it from the steering wheel. That's another big plus for me. There you go. You know what I mean? I know you don't you want to be fiddling with finding playlists. Yeah, I don't Come really on. care about any of this stuff in a Subaru BRZ in particular, but... But in general. Yes. In general. Another thing about the e-brake that I like compared to a Miata. The Miata's got the e-brake on the far side. This is on the closer yeah, inner this, side. This is the side you want it. That is where I want it, yeah. yeah. But you don't really need it because rear wheel drive, you just throttle steer. Yeah, but like, you know, you can always just crank a couple. <clears throat> yeah, if you're doing real drifting, which or, then you or need a hydro. Trying to show off the girls in parking lots. Yeah, know? I guess so. Pull the ladies, have a bumper slapping good time. Bumper slapper of a good time. This is a bumper slapper of a good time of a car. Oh, it is. Like, you just want to walk up to it and just give it a little slap. <laughs> Oh, also, this is a four-seater. Yeah, it is, but you can't really fit any humans back there if no. you have two people up like, front. I can fit behind myself if I'm being courteous to myself. Yeah, and just for your entertainment purposes, I will show you me behind myself, and there you go. I don't fit. Hey, what do you think of this uh, red stitching and carbon fiber trim in here? I like it. Overall, this is a really nice interior. It's like they're taking stuff from like high-end luxury cars. They're like, ah, throw it in the BRZ. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so sick. It's so fun. It is, the, though. The steering I'm, and everything, I'm not worried at nothing's all. Nothing's weird. Oh, yeah, so the steering feels amazing. Exactly. We've got no lane keep, no nothing, and it's fine. You don't need it. Yeah, I love driving this thing. Like, just driving this thing. The second I got into it, yeah. I was like, yes, manual transmission, manual everything almost, kind of. Compared to the 86 that we drove, that was automatic and didn't have CarPlay, Android Auto, satellite radio rewinding. Like, this is, like, there's really, really no reason at all to get an 86. I know, and they're more expensive, which is like, so weird. Zero, like unless you like the bumper more and the headlights and taillights. Yeah, because like, you're getting the same engine and everything, which also Toyota puts their name behind this motor. So like, there's gotta be something to it as well, so. Yeah, it's funny that Toyota's two cool sports cars are just from other companies. Well, yeah, the majority of the parts are I mean, from other like, companies. I mean, let's be real. Like, I know. They just rebadged two cars. Essentially, yeah. Which is pretty smart. It is very smart And you said part. what, they might be doing a mid-engine car with like with a box. Porsche? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Y'all have our three, I don't know, whatever. They got it figured out, I guess. I guess it'd still be an MR2, right? I, it would be an MR2. Yeah, I figure what the two stands for. With a Porsche thing and there'd be some badges on the inside. Actually, they'd be behind you. MR2 squared. So I guess with all of that out of the way, we obviously love the BRZ. It's one of the most fun cars ever. What's the price? $33,795. Canadian. Which is kind of a lot because this is the most expensive one you can get. Yeah, I mean, you can just buy and use, and they're pretty much the same, but... 
Exactly. If you don't want to miss out on this cool satellite radio, tune mix, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And you want the cool gray paint. It, it might be worth it to get the newer one because realistically, like, it's really nice having Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Yeah, and if you don't want this special edition, you can get this for around $27,000, $28,000. So, there you go. Yeah, and you probably can't even get the special edition anyways because they're all probably sold out. Well, I don't know, 100 they're probably also. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so let us know what you think of the Subaru BRZ. Is it too old? Is it still fun? Is 370Z the answer to more power? 370Z. Let us know. Is a V8 the answer to more power and more fun? Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes and go to Teespring for cool shirts. <laughs>